if you guys are listening, go to uh, it's at Farm Cup Coffee, right? Yeah. And um, your highlights are awesome. Your highlight of Peru, like really cool. Oh, it, it's them. not just like like all my highlights are me with my camera doing dumb <laughs> stuff, but you or me with my phone. You guys, it's like thoughtful. There's music. Um, there's explanations. It's super well done. And Thank so, you. if you guys are listening at Farm Cup Coffee, go check it out. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, there's uh, three little highlights from I think. One is Peru, one's from Costa Rica. And I think another one was just Hawaii of our travels because our whole thing is drink coffee, travel, and do good. So we try to combine that's those like three That's like your company ideas. motto? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's our tagline. <sighs> Come on, it's yeah. beautiful. So we try to combine all three of those aspects into our brand. Yeah, why are those things important to you guys? Well, coffee, obviously, because right. we love your coffee. Hobby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, travel is just really what we love to do on our spare time and we want to inspire people to travel to these countries that they wouldn't travel Mm. to because of the coffee Uh, that's why we traveled to peru because of the coffee farm and in the meantime we saw a lot more of the country that we have never seen you know sure so i think that is kind of a way to connect with the coffee a little bit more Mm -hmm. by knowing the culture and the country around it because they they're very stripped down like we have all these distractions in los angeles but when you go to these farms they live off of whatever they have and then their coffee is their life yeah so you really want to connect with them by knowing their story their culture and their food did you guys get closer while you were there like the both of you yeah i I would say we trust each other a lot more yeah because we were it's weird always together yeah so i remember every time i'd go to peru and i'd come back it was like I felt America. I felt society hit me. Yeah. It was like the strangest thing. I remember being there and like loving my sister and like super, you know, we're all like very yes. touchy, feely, huggy. Yeah. And then you come to you come to America and it's like the first day of school or whatever. And we're just like, okay, see ya. You know, there's, <laughs> there's no, it's like we're all of a sudden back in it. And yeah. I remember just feeling like this disconnect right. Right, that would slowly take place and then it feels normal again, right? right. And yeah. then you're, it's so weird. It's like night and day. The people in peru were so kind there's this one story where i have so many stories yeah we were traveling to um the seven colored mountains uh and we got really really air sick or what is it called altitude 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 sick Yeah. yeah and there was this lady in this small town who saw that um he was very sick so she got these herbs it was coca tea coca yeah she got them and like just started rubbing them on his face and forehead and was like you need to feel better and she just helped us out of the kindness of her heart you know? yeah she didn't ask for anything and just little things like that over there you wouldn't find over here you know so someone true. just to stop not knowing who you are and just helping you it was just yeah. really funny because i came up to her she had like a little stand selling like water or some things for you know people who are walking through yeah and she saw that i was like white pale white and then like my eyes were probably just like i don't know what they look like but she probably was really worried (laughs) sure and then she grabbed me by my sweater she sat me down and then she's like hold on hold on and then out of nowhere she just leaves you know and i was like okay i think she just wants me to sit down or something yeah she brings out a bunch of like you know just these coca leaves and also uh i don't know what it is in in english but it's called ruda in spanish ruda this herb that i i guess it was growing somewhere Mm -hmm. but she grabs it and like not violently, but, you know, pretty <laughs> roughly starts, like, putting it all over me and everything. And then she stuffs it into my chest. And then she is like, okay, now go. And I was like, okay, feels better. I, I guess it does work. And, you know, that was one of the things. But I think one of the best stories that I can tell from Peru is, like, just sitting with the people at the farm. Yeah. And me thinking, oh, what are we going to eat? Like, I have no idea. This was our second right. night. Right. It's a good ever. question. <laughs> I'm like, what are we going to eat? I, there's no restaurants. There's right. nothing. It's just you guys. Yeah. Right. So the the daughter-in-law of the owner uh, went to the back, grabbed the, the stuff that was growing in the back, and grabbed some meat that she had, and then just started picking stuff from everywhere. And she made things, and they were delicious. I mean, <laughs> it was one of the best meals I've had in a long time. And whenever we go to these places, to these countries, we always like to experience their cuisine as they are. And we always like to go to very high end restaurants, but also eat at the side of the road because yeah. we know that those foods are going to be awesome as well. For sure. And this thing was just the most simple thing that you can imagine. And it was great. And then after that, you go to your room, no TV, no electricity, no nothing. Yeah. And you're just there and you're like, wow, 
this is it. This is life. This we is just had each other. Yeah, this is it's just great. All you got. It's yeah. So nice. And it just strips you down to the bare minimums, but then you quickly realize that that's all you need, and it fulfills you. Yeah. And the next morning, it's like the sounds of the dogs, the sounds of the chickens, the sounds of like just the wind blowing. Yeah. It just fascinates you because you're like, wow, I've never felt this in LA before. There's a thousand more people to my left and to my right everywhere that I look. So this just felt foreign. And, Mm -hmm. you know, walking through the jungle was another thing. Like it was just amazing to see things that I've only seen like as a kid in picture books. You know, you see like the little dark frogs and you see the toucans. That was in Costa Rica. But like you see all these things crawling underneath you and you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. You quickly realize that you're not and you just move on and. You know, you have a like an ant or like a spider, and you just flick it off, and you're like, okay, you get used to it. You get you're used like, to it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is part of life, and that's yeah. okay. I love that. That's a part of your business, part of your culture. Yeah, it, yeah. It's really important, and that goes back to like the the drink, travel, and do good. Because yeah. a lot of these, you know, people say, oh, let's go to Peru, let's go to Machu Picchu, right? Right. But they forget about everything else in between. Yeah. And it's like, how do you experience that? Like, you can go to Machu Picchu, you can go to Mexico, and all these places. But the things are very concentrated or heavily Americanized. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why do you want to experience that when you can get it at home? But go to the other places. People are nice. It's okay to travel outside of these places and experience more than what you've ever thought. And that's what we want to inspire people to do. At the end of the day, it's like experience something more that you are completely unfamiliar with. And you will find that there's a whole other stuff to find. So true. 